What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. You can see here we are in the live streaming setup real quick. Uh, by the way, guys, we do a live show every Saturday around 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and I would love to see you there. It's always just a really fun time. Now, I wanted to end this week by checking in on one of the weekly polls. And again, if you're a new subscriber or if you haven't subscribed yet, stay tuned and pay attention to my community tab here on YouTube because we try to do a poll every single week. And the pers perspective we get from these polls uh, has been increasingly eye-opening throughout the weeks because you guys don't always agree with me and I don't always agree with you and the outcomes of these polls sometimes boggle my mind and surprise me uh, which is actually exactly what's happened this week so <laughs> we're gonna talk about this it is 7 55 a.m. let's get down to business as we can see here I asked you guys have collectors turned their backs on Rolex. This is not the outcome I expected to see. It is a close poll, um, but 50, uh, excuse me, 46% said yes, and 54% said no. A majority of you said no. Collectors have not turned their backs on Rolex. Why did this surprise me? Well, every time I make an episode about Rolex, with uh, increasing frequency, the majority of comments are negative about Rolex. Uh, the majority of people have things to complain about Rolex, uh, whether it be their wait lists, whether it be how, uh, you know, you only buy a brand name when you buy a Rolex, uh, the ADs doing shady stuff. This is totally understandable. I, I commiserate with, with the people that are frustrated with Rolex because I myself am somewhat frustrated with Rolex. You can't go into any AD nowadays and find the watch you want without prior product purchase or without just ridiculous uh, wait list times. And what made it worse is about three months ago, uh, Rolex like made an official statement and finally broke their silence on these product shortages. For those of you who haven't seen the episode I made about that, click up here and watch it in the corner. I'm going to do one of those little pop-ups. You can watch that episode. But the cliff notes uh, is that Rolex essentially just wiped their hands clean of any responsibility and passed the buck onto their ADs. They said, hey, the past two years have been kind of crazy and um, there's just a huge demand and we can't meet the supply, but we're trying really hard. Also, uh, we don't handle any of the allocations or sales. So that's all on the ADs. So essentially what they're saying is, hey, there, a lot of people want our watches and that's really cool. But guys, we're not the ones that sell them. We just make them. The ADs are the ones that sell them. They put you on a wait list. There's nothing we can do about it. Really, really dumb. And then when I recently, I think like a week ago, uploaded the episode about the uh, new price increases for 2022, I think it was like a 3.4% average price increase across the board with Rolex's catalog, um, a lot of people were also kind of frustrated, which, which I get, I understand. What we have to take into consideration with that, though, is... While Rolex might be a greedy company, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to argue about that. Um, I mean, in the U.S. alone, inflation's at 7%. So, can like, I think Rolex could have been much more aggressive with their price increases. That's just me. I think that we, we shouldn't necessarily complain about that one. I think that uh, the fact you can't even get a Rolex at MSRP nowadays um, is the bigger issue. So the MSRP increasing is kind of irrelevant because you're not going to be able to find one uh, at the AD. But I have already complained about that back and forth, back and forth. So let's look into what the comment section was saying. Have collectors turned their backs on Rolex? You guys say no. Uh, people are still voting. Um, but let's see what the comment section has to say. So uh, Vapomain says, I think a better question would be, should, should they turn their backs? And my answer is a resounding yes. So he was probably one of the one of the dudes that voted yes on this. Um, Jim G writes, "I'm more happy with my Breitlings and Omegas. My wife and I switched from Rolex to these two brands, and I've never looked back." So this is another thing I kind of wanted to touch upon. 
Have collectors turned their backs on Rolex? I guess the majority of people say no. But the good thing about being turned off uh, by Rolex is that it kind of opens you up to all these amazing other sports watches. Because let's face it, guys, whether you like it or not, Rolex is a sports watchmaker, right? Um, I know they make the Cellini line, but the truth is they should probably just dissolve the Cellini line. I think it's good. Oh my gosh, is the mic picking that up? It's garbage day, and it sounds like the garbage man is, has like run over something. Anyway, <laughs> perks of living in the city, am I right, guys? <laughs> Get me the F out of here. Uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is Rolex is a tool watch maker, but there are some other really great options, all right? Zinn. Uh, Zinn has a terrible website, by the way. If anybody from Zinn is watching this, um, your website is terrible. Anyway, <laughs> excuse me. Look at these U1s. Look at this tegumented steel badassery that Zinn gets us. Is it Swiss made? No. But it is from the Deutschland. It's an awesome German watchmaker. I don't care. You don't like faux patination. I get it. But you will never get anything this interesting and different and dynamic from Rolex. You won't. This is coming from a guy that owns five of them. And I own a Submariner. I love my Submariner. The patination on my Submariner is real. Um, because it's it was from 1985. I believe it's a 16800. You guys have seen it. But things... This interesting tegumented steel, uh, black coating, sapphire crystal, yada, yada, yada. Really, really beautiful patination. You don't like that? You want something cleaner? Uh, let's see. This is actually something that I've been wanting to get. I've been eyeing a black bezel. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where are you? Bingo. Um... I've been actually looking at these U50s. I think they're really badass, and I've been looking at a black bezel one. I don't know. Man, Zinn, your, your website is really, really terrible. Um, but it's really cool. Why? Because I've worn one, and it gives me Seiko Diver vibes, but it's tegumented steel, and it's German, and it's really, really cool. Yeah, I get it. People are turned off about the four o'clock crown. I've heard people say that it's stupid that Zinn does the four o'clock crown because that's a Seiko thing. Um, I don't care. It's comfortable. It's really badass. Uh, let's say you don't want Zinn. Guess what? What I found a lot more people paying attention to Glass Huta. Glass Huta original with these amazing CQs, which I think honestly, there's a trend here, guys. This faux patination. Am I a vintage guy? Yes, I am. Also, I'm personally vintage because uh, in the commodity world, you have to be, I believe, over 25 years old to be considered a vintage item, and I am 32. <laughs> but with this hairline and these wrinkles and my general grumpy demeanor, I could pass for a solid 52-year-old. I don't know. Add some add 20 years to that. Anyway, I like this faux patination. Uh, I think it's a badass watch. 39 0.5 millimeter case diameter uh, wears like a dream. They do have a blue bezel version. They do have kind of a two-toned version. Uh, this would be the one to get in my opinion though. Uh, black dial, broad arrow minute hand, no crown guards, uh, slim lugs, just a classic diver. Also German. Let's move on to something that is not a conventional diver. Uh, a lot more people are paying attention to GP. Gerard Pergo with their Lariata. Beautiful watch. I've mentioned this in the past two live streams. I think this is probably one of the best watches to come out in the past two years. Uh, this Lariato Infinity Edition. Onyx dial. Really beautiful applied gold tone indexes. Uh, color match date wheel. Listen. I rally against these integrated bracelet angular bezel watches. But if you were to offer me... An AP Royal Oak, even a Patek Nautilus, or this. This is far and away the most affordable. I would choose this. This Lariato, so interesting, so beautiful. Now that people are kind of jumping off the Rolex bandwagon, now that people are getting kind of, 
I don't know, jaded when it comes to these luxury sports watches coming out from the Holy Trinity. People are paying attention to these other guys. And Gerard Perigo is no slouch. I think it's really, really cool that uh, more people are talking about these things. And again, this is not a totally new watch. This has been around for a couple years, but this is one of the best watches to come out in uh, t- the past, I'll say, two years. The unfortunate thing is this is limited, and um, this specific variant is you know, pretty hard to find. Moving on to the comment section. Eric, as a collector, I've turned my attention to Ball. I wish they'd get their deserved recognition for their quality and uniqueness. Not to mention, they may not increase in value, but they may maintain it pretty well. Again, guys, there are other tool watchmakers out there. We got to get a ball on the channel, by the way, guys. If any of you, Eric, I don't know if you're watching this episode, but uh, if any ball owners (laughs) want to send me your balls, (laughs) I can't believe what I'm saying. Uh, Check it out, the P.O. Box. Um, Email me. Info at the timetellershop.com. Info at the timetellershop.com. Um, send me your balls. I would love to review it. Michael Clark, my most recent interaction with an AD was accompanying a friend who's getting into the hobby who was told he could possibly be added to a 10 year wait list for a blue Milgauss if he became a repeat customer of their attainable models first. I'm actually interested in the reply here. Definitely an educational introduction to the hobby. This is what I'm talking about, guys. People think I'm joking with the pre-product purchase. Um, no, that's I, I didn't like fabricate that. This is a thing. This is one of the sleazy things that ADs, they try to get you to grease the wheel a little bit. They're like, hey, you know what? Hey, you want this watch? This is a you know, decades-long wait list. I might be able to um, find one in the back, though, if you buy a couple more of these... Oyster Perpetuals. All right, how, how, how many do I have to get? I don't know, maybe uh, maybe buy like four of them and we can talk. Yeah, let me buy four Oyster Perpetuals. Spend, uh, what, 30 grand on a watch, on, on four watches I don't even want, and then maybe I can get the one I want. No, screw that. You're not Longa. You can't do that, Rolex. Chris Alvarez, the question is, is collecting something unobtainable collecting or a clever way to save up, <laughs> save money up that you'll never spend? That's true. If you're going after a watch that is you can't even get and you keep saving your money, that that's um, might not be a bad thing. You're just saving your money. Mike Howard. My last Rolex AD guy gave me no foreplay. It's a bummer, dude. It's all... I'm telling you guys, if you want some tips from me, sometimes the foreplay is the most important part. Uh, expected me to swallow. Okay, this is, I shouldn't have read this online. That's going to get me demonetized. Mike, why'd you got to do that? I was making, I was doing a bit with you about it getting all nasty. And then you took it to another level. You took it to another level. By the way, I still have this boo-boo, guys. Put some ointment on it. For those of you wondering, uh, I am wearing a, let me see if it wants to focus here. Uh, I'm wearing my G-Shock Neo Tokyo. Because, let's face it, this is a watch that you can get incredible bang per buck is it gonna go up in price no is it incredible absolutely mike whitaker rolex isn't really in my sphere of watch collecting but from what i can tell on the outside no collectors haven't turned their backs on rolex they're good watches overpriced in my humble opinion with silly consumer culture and ad experience but they're sought after nonetheless time will tell if that can continue very reasonable comment rod salvador love rolex as long as their prices keep going up, they'll be popular with collectors slash investors. But so much nice stuff from JLC, Gus Huta, misspelt it, but who cares? I can't even say it properly. Moser, Vacheron, etc. You can get for the same price. Trust me, my friend. Those other brands you've mentioned give you so much more than Rolex. Tend to agree. Uh, tend to agree. Uh, if you're going to compare anything from JLC to Rolex, JLC probably makes a better watch. Could you stack up one of their Polaris's against a Rolex? Maybe. I think that their uh, Navy SEAL watch is... I would take probably JLC's Navy SEAL watch over a um, Rolex Deep Sea. That's just me. Glass Huta, I've already said, if you if you handed me a 41 millimeter Submariner versus one of those Glass Huta CQs, I'd go CQ all the way. Vacheron, I'd pick a Vacheron over... 
pretty much anything. So I, that's that's kind of not fair. But yeah, Rod, I tend to agree with you. Trinity says Rolexes have and may always retain their value very well. Plus, they've managed to sometimes force their way into history with their dive watches and being one of the first brands to offer a watch with some bit of water resistance. All true. Rolex had a um, patent on a threaded crown very, very, very early on. Uh, I guess if Omega almost sunk after the quartz crisis, then anything can happen because they have a rich history in neurology as well, but I wouldn't count on it as of now. So he thinks Rolex is in it for the long haul. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't think Rolex is going anywhere. I'm just interested with the increasing amount of complaints against Rolex. What's the what's the consensus here? I guess people still really like it. DuckTales, really cool Porsche here. Rolex are in a pickle because let's be honest, for many of the attra- for many the attraction comes from how difficult they are to obtain and the value they hold as an investment piece. Guys, just sidebar here, don't use watches as investment pieces. Let's get back to the comment. If you could readily walk into an AD and get any steel model, not only would the secondary market for Rolex evaporate with stock getting dumped below MSRP, but because of this, demand of the most uh, demand for most of the products at ADs would fall off a cliff as well. Eventually, demand would stabilize at a lower level. But all that production capacity, blah, 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 blah. Yes. He's saying, he's essentially saying that if if the supply met the demand, prices would drop. Yes, economy 101. Um, I don't think that would necessarily be a bad thing, though. People would get the products they want, um, and Rolex would still be selling a crap ton of them. So, believe me, if ADs sold, if, if ADs were able to sell everyone that walked in watch, Rolex would probably still be make, would make more money than they are now. That's my opinion. Who knows? I could be wrong. I'm not an economist. Mark Stark, cool name. The question is more, has Rolex turned its back on watch lovers and collectors? The prizes are one thing, but you can't even buy a Submariner Explorer, Datejust, and those are the types of watches that should be common, basic, introductory watches to the brand. Good luck finding anything stainless steel nowadays. Um, kind of right before the the, the, the pandemic hit, um, I walked into an AD, and the only things they had were solid gold Yacht Master 2s. I couldn't get... I, I couldn't even see a Submariner. They had one Smurf... Uh, they had one Smurf, okay, so that's the white gold Submariner, and they had like two or three uh, Yacht Master 2s, two of which being precious metal, one being the like two-tone or whatever. Um, insane. <laughs> so you can go in to an AD and get the big money watches, but if you want something more reasonable at MSRP, good freaking luck. You go. I have a good relation with my AD. So they get me the watches that I like. I'm still a collector. Uh, Type B Flieger. Cool name. Attempting to buy a Rolex isn't worth losing your dignity by sucking up to an AD and buying watches you don't want, only to never get the call. For a thing you don't need in the first place, that's approaching insanity. Yeah, true. Uh, We're going to finish up with this guy, Tiago. Well, I'd say no. Collectors are always after them. They're hard to get, but are worth even more money when you resell them, and I'd say that's what most collectors are after nowadays. It's kind of a bummer, I think, that most collectors... I'd like to think, in my idealistic world, that collectors want to uh, buy the watches to enjoy them. But uh, even with the with the Pokemon card thing going on now, Logan Paul and everything, it's, it's kind of like people aren't enjoying these things. They're just using it as another way to invest and flip and everything. Oh, NFTs. Don't screenshot me, bro. Oh, check out this thing. I'm going to flip it. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like I get it, dude. I own, a, I run businesses. I try to make money, uh, join the channel for 99 a month and, uh, you support me. <laughs> check out the time teller shop. Number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches handpicked by me. Not a sponsor. Just kidding. I sponsor everything on this channel because, uh, it's my channel, but, um, I get it. I'm, I'm a capitalist. I want to make money, but I, I would like to think that collectors are collecting to enjoy it and not just trying to flip, not just trying to sell the watch collecting hobby. And we're, we're going to finish up here, guys. The watch collecting hobby 
is so much fun and so enriching and so fulfilling. And I understand the thrill of the hunt. It's it's never ending. It can get frustrating. It can become an addiction. That's why at the Time Teller Shop, some of our best-selling merch is the Don't Start Watch Collecting merch. But the truth is, it's th th this hobby has changed my life, not just because of the channel and the social media and everything. It's because the, the people that I've met in the hobby... Uh, the, the comfort and almost kind of security that you feel when you bump into something and you have something in common, like a wristwatch, you can get to talking and then you realize, uh, oh, you like this? Well, well, I also like this. And then you start talking about cars or this or that. And you realize this was just a really fun entryway to meet this person. And it happens over and over again uh, when you find these little things that, that, connect each other and I think not to get all woo woo but that's kind of what the world needs right now right we need to uh, be less um, isolating and uh, we need to come together a bit more guys and so having something like this to bring us together like dude the past two years I feel like I've been cut off from everybody ex except watch collectors you guys have been kind of a lifeline. You guys have been the people that I can interact with regularly. And we're, we've come together because we love these watches. So to bring it back to something a little less deep, I would just hope that, that most of you guys in my viewership are buying watches to enjoy them and not really uh, worrying about flipping and, and this or that. But to get back to the poll, very interesting outcome. I'll monitor this and, and, and see how it goes through the week, uh, or I should say for the rest of the weekend. Maybe we'll talk about this during the live stream tomorrow. But have collectors turned their backs on Rolex? The people say no. They got to listen to you. Good. Thank you. Thank you for interacting with the polls, guys. I really do appreciate it. Um, guys, we're going to end it here. Uh, I will see you on the next one. I'll see you tomorrow uh, for the live stream. Anybody that wants to join in. And... Um, yeah, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Love you guys.